Okay, hello, 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 hello. Um, it's been a while yet again, and I'm very, very sorry. Um, the last video, the second video that I actually made, got corrupted, and I couldn't post it on Wednesday. And I tried to record another video, but the problem was, um, I was too busy. School, you know, school, and I apologize. Okay, that's why I'm recording it this video today and i'm going to post this video today i'm going to try my best so i want to make this like quite of a long video i hope but because because we're reacting to a video um i forgot who made it um hold on hold on uh made by by voices of the past five most disastrous accounts of first contact in history so if you don't know what that means is where another nation, for example, um, the Spaniards, the Spanish Empire, um, discovered new lands. For example, um, they discovered the Philippines. That's that's the first contact of new civil, new, let's say, new lands, new uh, civilization, maybe. And yeah, that's that's another example uh, of the first contact. Um, I do like learning about. Um, first contact in history, like um, from uh, the Span the Spaniards um, discovering the Philippines. I, I do, I do, pro I do like that. And anyway, so this is five most disastrous accounts of first contact in history. Disastrous. So it went horribly wrong. And um, knowing that it's the Spaniards, um, I, I I learned a lot in history, like in philippine history and i'm not saying spaniards were are bad people but yeah they weren't very nice back then so anyway let's go um it's been a while and this is a new channel actually if you want to see this video it's going to be in the description down below check it out and this video will be in the description down below too so yeah let's go i'm gonna um fix my volume here we go and here this is five most disaster accounts of first contact history. And by the way, I might actually um, have like parts, like um, it says first part, second part. And it's because it has chapters here, and it's gonna take us a long time. I hope not, but a hey, because it's a 27 minute video, so I don't want to make my videos very long. So because my intros are very long. So anyway, let's go. The seed and origin of all the ruin and various disasters putting Wait, in turn. The coming of the Huns, 380 AD. Aminus Marcellinus. Okay, I don't know much about this, so I'm just gonna play it. I don't know much about the Huns. I should probably start learning about them, but I'm too busy learning about World War One, World War Two, the Pacific War. So yeah. While all places with unwanted fires, we have found to be this. Oh yeah, if you know if you know some about the Huns uh, about this history, can you please tell me? Just comment it down below. Um, I'm very very sorry if if I ha if I said something that um, kind of offended you guys. Um, this because I'm I'm inexperienced. I'm not very good at this. So yeah, and that's why I call myself history learner, not historian, because you know still inexperienced and not don't know much about more or let's say I don't have like ex expertise yet so yeah let's go people of the Huns but little known from ancient records dwelling beyond the Maotic Sea near the icebound ocean exceeding every degree of savagery Is that, was the, the Huns of in the China children are deeply furrowed with the steel from their very birth in order that the growth of hair, when it appears at the proper time, may be checked by the wrinkled scars. They grow old without beards and without any beauty, like eunuchs. They all have compact, strong limbs and thick necks, and are so monstrously ugly and misshapen that one might take them for two-legged beasts. Although they have the form of men, however ugly, they are so hardy in their mode of life that they have no need of fire, nor of savory food, but eat the roots of wild plants and the half-raw flesh of any kind of animal whatsoever, which they put between their thighs and the backs of their horses, and thus warm it a little. 
They are never protected by any buildings, but they avoid these like tombs. Roaming at large amid the mountains and woods, they learn from the cradle to endure cold, hunger and thirst. No one in their country ever plows a field or touches a plow handle. None of their offspring, when asked, can tell you where he comes from, since he was conceived in one place, born far from there, and brought up still further away. So when the report spread widely among the other Gothic peoples that a race of men hitherto unknown had now arisen from a hidden nook of the earth, like a tempest of snows from the high mountains, and was seizing or destroying everything in its way, the greater part of the people, looking for a home removed from all knowledge of the savages, and after long deliberation what abode to choose, they thought that Thrace offered them a convenient refuge. Mm -hmm. But the Goths joined with the Huns and the Halani, exceedingly warlike and brave peoples hardened to the difficulties of severe toils, and set up their camp near Perinthus, and reduced to utter ruin the fertile fields which extended far and wide about it, killing or capturing those who dwelt there. From there, they hastened in rapid march to Constantinople. Okay, Constantinople. I know Constantinople. Uh, right now, um, modern day, Constantinople is called Istanbul. Um, Constantinople, modern, present day, is part of, um, uh, what should I call it again, uh, Turkey. Yeah, it was part of Turkey, but they renamed it as Istanbul. If, when it, when, um, when the Greek, the Greeks, uh, when Greece still, uh, um, uh, controlled that part in, that part it's called Constantinople. I don't know much about Constantinople, but I heard it's a quite of a huge city. It's almost it's a huge city. It's almost a trade route because it's it has this two it has like in the middle it has like a river or let's say uh, I don't know what you call that. Is it a river or is it it's like a massive ocean where this the two cities are like separated but it's it's just one city. You know, in the middle, it's like a massive, massive um, river or, let's say, ocean um, where tr trade, um, trade comes through it. Get um, every empire that holds or controls that part or th the city um, can tax the, the trade that comes through and comes through the river. So yeah, that's the only thing that I know about that and comment more things about it and correct me if I'm wrong, okay? So let's go. Greedy for its vast heaps of treasure, marching in square formations for fear of ambushes and intending to make many mighty efforts to destroy the famous city. But as they went on, the their city. courage was broken when they beheld the oblong circuit of the walls, the blocks of houses covering a vast space, the beauties of the city beyond their reach the vast population inhabiting it, and the strait nearby that separates the Pontus from the Aegean. So the Goths destroyed the factories of warlike materials which they were preparing, and after suffering greater losses than they had inflicted, they then departed and spread everywhere. Oh yeah, by the way, I, 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 I look at the vi video, it has like chapters on it. So this part might actually be the first part of our reaction series on the five most disastrous contacts. We might actually um, be uh, react to this like one by one. First one, the um, the first is the coming of the Hans. Next is the the, Span the Spaniards arrive. This part. This is the second. This is the third. This is the fourth, and this is the fifth and the last one. So we might actually have a separate separate videos reacting with because I don't like having long videos like this, so let's go. Over the northern provinces. In war, events of importance are the result of trivial causes. So said Julius In Caesar. War. Misunderstandings when two cultures meet for the first time can quickly turn to battle. And so our sponsor today is War Thunder, oh. the most comprehensive vehicle combat oh, game out there. Oh, it's a, it's a sponsor. Hold on. Um, let's see if we, we can skip this part. Uh, okay, so that's it. So the, now... Let's go. 
Chronica Mexicana, a few days later, 19, the Spaniards arrived. So we may actually end it here, maybe. Yeah, it's just 10 minutes because I want to post this video, just a short video for y'all for now. And I'm gonna try part two next video. I'm gonna try recording it tomorrow because it's tomorrow Sunday. And I want this video is just to be like 10 minutes long. I just want it like that. And yeah, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos like this. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye. And oh yeah, next part will be, I don't know when, I hope Wednesday. Um, I hope, I hope the video doesn't get corrupted again. And the third part might actually be on Saturday because this part is qu quite a long one. So yeah, the third part, actually another third, the third episode, the fourth episode is here, 1642. And in third part is Quang, Le Quang Long's letter to George the third. So yeah, I'll try to study more about these because I went, I just went reacting to this video without anything, without any knowledge about this. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.